Well, here we are after 50 years from the original release of the New American Standard Bible back in 1971. Um, that uh, was around the time that I was out of seminary and I knew the men who did that translation. And obviously for decades and decades I have preached from the New American Standard. The Lachman Foundation gave a great gift in that translation to Bible expositors and to, to all believers who have found it the, the best of the best. But this is a new day and today I'm beyond thrilled to hold right here in my hands the first copy of the Legacy Standard Bible. This is the first day that I've seen it, the first time that I have held it. It's everything that I would want in a Bible in terms of the way it's produced and manufactured, but more than that, it is everything that I want in a Bible from a translation standpoint. This is the best translation the English language has ever seen. The Legacy Standard Bible in its entirety, the Old and New Testaments, is now available. It has been launched. And Pastor MacArthur, as he said there, believes it is the best Bible translation in the English language. So there's no hyperbole there, no overstatement at all. If you compare the Legacy Standard Bible to every other English translation, it is the absolute best one that we have ever seen. Well, obviously not everybody is going to agree with that, and obviously he's saying that uh, from his standpoint. It's kind of almost like an emotional statement because it is the culmination of years of ministry he has spent using the New American Standard Bible, as well as the work that a team from the Master's Seminary and College have done, which is the institutions that John MacArthur is associated with. And so this is the culmination of their work updating the New American Standard Bible. They wanted to do an update. I believe what spurred it on was that the NASB was updated fairly recently as the NASB 2020. And when this uh, group saw the direction that the translation was going in its update, they really wanted to have um, what I would call a more conservative literal type of an update of the New American Standard Bible. And so they worked it out with the Lachman Foundation to do this. And I have talked about this translation on my channel quite a bit. And by the way, if you like Christian nerdy content analysis, reviews, and fun, make sure you subscribe to my channel where I talk about things like this. But I really just wanted to make the announcement that this Bible, as a lot of people know, is officially out and maybe just to answer some preliminary questions that people may have. I've done videos, as I said, about this translation. I even have a series of videos going through the preface of the Legacy Standard Bible. So if you'd like to check those videos out, that might be helpful to you, just to give you some background on this translation and the approach, the translation philosophy that they had. Now, one of the criticisms of this particular translation that I've seen people throwing out there is that really it's not a new translation. It's really, some people are saying, just the New American Standard Bible with the term Yahweh. Now, I think that's an oversimplification or an overstatement, just like Pastor MacArthur saying it's the best translation in the English, in the English language. I would also say it's an overstatement to say that it's simply the New American Standard Bible with the term Yahweh added. <laughs> So I do want to show a few passages in this video just so you get a feel for what they were doing in this translation. Absolutely, I will say it is an update of the New American Standard Bible. So you can't really call it a completely new translation. And I don't think they were ever trying to say that it is. That's why it's called the Legacy Standard Bible. It's really trying to present a legacy of Bible translation. It's trying to build on the legacy that ultimately created the New American Standard Bible. And the New American Standard Bible has always been known as a very scholarly, accurate, very literally oriented or word for word oriented translation of the Bible. So that's really what they were going for is they just wanted to 
preserve that legacy, that heritage. They wanted to present something that was maintaining that very literal aspect of the New American Standard Bible, but also have something that's available that's not going to be updated a lot. They really wanted something that will be a legacy, something that will last, stand the test of time, because so many Bible translations today are being updated quite often. So I think they really wanted something that's going to be very stable, what they call a very stable text that will pretty much stay the same for years and years. So that's kind of a quick rundown of the Legacy Standard Bible. As I said, it is available now in its entirety. You can read it online. You can also get physical copies. And I have acquired a physical copy that I'm going to be showing on my channel soon. I'll be reviewing this Bible, taking a good look at it. And uh, I, I will say, I'm not going to show all of it here right now. It is a really nice Bible. So I look forward to doing a review on the physical copy that I have here. So stay tuned for that. But let's look at some passages in the Legacy Standard Bible compared to what it was updating, the New American Standard Bible. And this is the 95 edition here on the right. The Legacy Standard Bible is on the left. And it says here in Micah 3.5, I'm just giving some passages as some examples of what I've seen as, as the differences in these Bibles. And in Micah 3.5, it says, Thus says Yahweh concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, when they have something to bite with their teeth, they call out peace. But against him who puts nothing in their mouths, they set themselves apart for war. Now let's compare the Legacy Standard Bible, what we read there with the New American Standard, which says, thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who lead my people astray. When they have something to bite with their teeth, they cry peace. But against him who puts nothing in their mouths, they declare holy war. Obviously, you can see that a big difference here is the term for what has traditionally been translated as Lord, capital L-O-R-D in the New American Standard is now Yahweh, the name of God. And that's one of the big things that they have really highlighted about this translation is that they wanted to translate the name of God in the best, most accurate way possible. Now, traditionally, for various reasons, it has been rendered Lord. But as you can see here, it's rendered Yahweh. Another difference, though, is uh, just, you know, just some little things here. They call out peace versus they cry peace. And then notice in the last phrase here, it says they set themselves apart for war. In the New American Standard Bible, it said they declare holy war. So I think here is an instance where it's probably a little bit more literal, even though they did have to add a supplied word there themselves. That term being set apart is more, I think, what the Hebrew actually reads like, as opposed to declaring holy war. So that helps you to see that it's not really just simply taking the NASB, keeping it the same, and putting the term Yahweh in there. They actually are updating other phrases. And I would say the overall trend that I'm seeing is it's actually even more literal than the New American Standard Bible. Let's look at a couple other passages. In John chapter 15, verses 2 and 3, I've actually talked about this passage before on my channel about the Legacy Standard Bible here where Jesus is talking about the vine and the branches. And it says here that the vine dresser cleans the branch so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. In the New American Standard Bible, it said that he prunes the branch so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And interestingly, in the New American Standard, you see the footnotes here. It talks about literally the word is cleans instead of prunes. And then on the word clean here, it says pruned like a branch. So it kind of explains that, even though it translates uh, the word in a couple different ways there. But in the Legacy Standard Bible, it just says he cleans the branch. And then in verse 3, you are already clean. So that's an instance where they were trying to help the reader see the verbal connection in the original language, the idea of pruning or cleaning the branch and his disciples already being clean. So in the New American Standard Bible, it's a little bit less literal, but it's explained more in the footnotes. In the Legacy Standard Bible, you can see, I would say it's really more consistent and literal there. 
Although I would also add, and I did a video on this, it could be a little weird or hard for people to understand when they read something like that. I hope that the Legacy Standard Bible soon will have footnotes available. I think that would be really helpful for this translation. I'm not sure why. To my knowledge, I have not seen anything in the Legacy Standard Bible with footnotes either online or in print form. Maybe I'm wrong about that. If anybody knows somewhere where the Legacy Standard Bible is available with footnotes, please let me know in the comments. But overall, what I'm saying here is the, the, the overall trend of this update of the New American Standard is more literal. And what they were going for was more consistent terminology when they translate words from the original language to English. Let's look at one more passage here in Acts 13.39 where Paul is preaching in a synagogue, I believe. It says, In him everyone who believes is justified from all things which you could not be justified from through the law of Moses. So that's the Legacy Standard Bible. In the New American Standard it says, Through him everyone who believes is freed from all things from which you could not be freed through the law of Moses. And you'll notice that the word freed has a footnote here, and on the bottom it says literally justified. In the Legacy Standard Bible, it just translates it as justified. Now the Legacy Standard Bible is not the only translation that translates the word that way as justify. I've seen it in other translations as well. But I think it's really interesting that the New American Standard Bible is so well known for being very literal. And yet you can see here, there are instances where the New American Standard Bible isn't necessarily highly literal. And the Legacy Standard Bible, from what I can tell, is moving even in a more literal direction, which for what it's trying to achieve and for the purposes that a lot of people will use it for, I think that will be a good thing. Um, it will give us something that's very literal when we're studying and we want to kind of see just how were things phrased in a very literal way in the original language. On the other hand, it won't be as accessible to the average reader who picks up the Bible. And of course, we can get into debates. Uh, as I often do talk about my channel, we have debates about uh, what is the best translation philosophy. I'll say it one more time. I personally like to have something that is quite literal on one hand so that I can see exactly how things are worded in the original language as best as possible, putting that in the English language. But for something that I want to have as comparison and maybe to be able to read out loud to people or explain things more clearly to people, it's nice to have something that really reads well, something like the Christian Standard Bible, which is not quite so literal. So my conclusion in all of this is that the Legacy Standard Bible is not simply the New American Standard Bible with the term Yahweh added. There is more to it than that. It is actually, from what I can tell, even more of a literal translation than the New American Standard Bible. And it is now available in some really beautiful, well-made copies. So I'm going to show that, as I said, in a future video. Stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments about what I've talked about in this video, I'd love to see that in the comments section. But thank you so much for taking some time to look at the Legacy Standard Bible a little bit with me from a fresh perspective.